Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to this, a first video, or the first video, should I say, in a brand new series that I'm going to be doing, uh, which is going to be covering all of the basic rules that you need to know uh, when you're first getting in to Star Wars Shatterpoint. Now we've had the full rule book, uh, we now know the fine little, last little bits of minutia, um, and I thought rather than looking back at what I've already done, we just start from the very beginning, break this down into mini um, sort of bite-sized, easy to consume pieces of content. Uh, and in this one, we're going to be starting off with building our very first strike team. Okay, so what is a strike team? Well, a strike team is basically the team that you are bringing to your uh, event, game, tournament, whatever else it may be. Um, it consists of multiple parts, and we're going to go through all of those in this video. Uh, and this will be a step-by-step -step guide of what you need to bring to build your very first strike team for uh, Atomic Mass Games Shatterpoint. So, starting off in a place where you may not think, but it's the first place we start, and that is the mission set. Now, what is a mission set? Uh, basically, these are going to be the missions that we are taking that we randomly select from when we're playing the game uh, that are, are going to define the different struggles and the different phases that we're going to go through. Um, now, right now, there is only a single mission set in the game. Um, the mission card or the mission map is shifting priorities. You can see there uh, each of those little circles is uh, where a uh, an actual objective point will be. Uh, and then alongside that, we're going to be bringing um, three phase one cards, three phase two cards, and three phase three cards. Now we're not going to go into too much detail around how we select these and everything else. We're going to leave that for a separate video, but just know that you need a set of nine uh, phase cards and one um, one actual mission card itself. And the important thing to note is that if you can see in the bottom corner here of the phase cards, there's a little symbol. That shows you the set that it is part of. And you can see there's that same corresponding symbol on the actual mission card itself. So you need to make sure that these symbols match. Now, not what we don't know is that if in the future there will be mission sets that come with the same symbol, allowing you to mix and match, my my sort of gut instinct is that there won't be and that it will be um, basically you'll get a different symbol for a completely different mission set. There'll be a different layout of the objectives. Uh, and then obviously the phase card will be totally different. But even with just the one setup, the fact that we've got three different phase cards for each phase um, means that we've got plenty of options uh, when we're going into our games. Next up then are the squads themselves. These are going to be the characters that you are choosing to bring to the game. So within each strike team, we're going to have two squads, squad one and squad two. And then each squad has to be made up of one primary unit, one secondary unit, and one support unit. Now I wanna take uh, just a second here just to explain the kind of hierarchy in Shatterpoint and how that works. So your strike team is absolutely everything, made up of your mission cards and then your squads, your two squads. Um, your squads are completely separate, so they are completely autonomous from each other. Um, so squad one has a primary unit, secondary unit, support unit, as does squad two. Um, so your squads are made up of units, and then your units are made up of characters and i'll show you some examples of this a little bit further down the line so even though a support unit for example may have multiple characters in there um so for example we've got the 501st clone troopers that come with two they're still classed as a single unit you only have a single card for them so um each squad needs one of each I also want to talk about eras in the game at the moment. Right now, everything is in the Clone Wars era, so it's not too confusing. But if you did catch up with the reveals at Adepticon, or even if you've read through the rulebook, you'll notice that there's other or one other era in there as well. Um, and there are some restrictions around when we're building these squads, uh, what you can and can't do. Um, so obviously, if everything within your strike team um, is the same era, that's absolutely fine. Um, however, you can have one squad being from one era. So in this case, it's the Clone Wars era. And then squad two are in the Galactic Civil Era, I think it is, Civil War Era, whatever it may be. 
that's going to be absolutely fine. That's not a problem at all. What you can't do, however, is mix and match eras within a single squad. So within a strike team, you can have multiple eras. Within a squad, you can only have a single era. So in this example, where we've got um, a primary unit that is uh, Clone Wars era, you can't then have a secondary unit from a different era and vice versa. So that one is a big no-no. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning when it comes to uh, building our actual squad are unique names. Um, put this bit in here because it is something that you do need to bear in mind. Um, using the example of Ahsoka Tano, she's the only character in the game at the moment that has two different cards. We've got Ahsoka Tano, Jedi No More, and we've got Padawan Ahsoka Tano. But the bit that we're interested in is going to be this unique name at the bottom here. So you can see it sort of highlighted there with the big arrows pointing towards it. <clears throat> now, it's very obvious with some characters, you know, Ahsoka Tano, um, that's going to be her name on both her name and then also the unique name as well. But when we get further into the game and we've got General Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader, they're both going to have the unique name of Anakin Skywalker because, spoiler alert, they are the same person. Uh, so always worth bearing in mind that you can't have multiple um, unique names in the same um, in the same, not only squad, but in the same strike force. So even if they're in different squads, even if they're from different eras, you cannot have any more than one of the same unique name. Next up then, let's talk about unit cards. Um, these are the things that are going to make up uh, parts of our squads. They're the cards that we bring along for each of the units that we choose to bring. Um, so first of all then, We've got the actual uh, stat cards, so the unit stat cards for each character. Now, these are double-sided, as you can see there with Anakin and with the 501st. On one side, they've got some details, and on the other side, they've got some details. And again, we'll break those down as well. The next card that you're going to need to bring along when building your strike team is that, sorry, your squad even, uh, is that corresponding character's stance card. Now, you can see here that for primary characters that they are going to be double-sided and right now secondary and support units are going to be single-sided that doesn't mean that we couldn't see double-sided ones in the future uh, but right now they are just single-sided uh, and then lastly we need to bring along a character's corresponding order card um, you'll notice a little symbol there on Kalani that Anakin doesn't have um, that's nothing too special it just acts as a reminder to the player that they've got something that they have to do at the very beginning of their activation with that character i think you see the same one on rex as well so let's take a look then at a character's stat card and let's break it down so you know what each of these components mean and what impact it has when you're building your squad and your strike teams. Uh, so because he's my favourite and I think he's the one that I'm going to be playing the most, I've gone for Darth Maul here. But the first thing that we need to look at is, because um, it's the first character that we have to choose when we're building a squad, what type of character is it? So we can see here that on Lord Maul's card, it clearly states he is a primary unit. And we can see in brackets, we can see um, that it is a single character. So a single base that makes up this unit. Next then is our unique name. So once again, remembering that we can't have more than one unit um, in our strike team that has the same unique name. Next up then is going to be the squad points that they bring. Squad points and the way that we build squads is very, very different to any other game that I've at least played in that it's baked in to the value and the cost of the primary. And it's one of the ways in which they balance the game. So what? how do squad points work? Well, squad points basically means that if you bring Lord Maul, you have eight squad points to spend on your secondary and your uh, support units that you want to bring along. Now, I believe it's up to, so you don't have to spend the full amount, but you're probably going to want to spend that full amount um, because basically that's what 
more brings along with him. Other characters bring um, less. Uh, so right now we've got uh, Anakin who brings seven with him, meaning that essentially Anakin is an individual unit is slightly better than Maul. But the way that those characters are balanced out is Maul gets to bring more value of other things with him. We then have the force stat and you can see here Lord Maul is going to bring three force power, I think we're sort of calling it with him. Uh, this is going to be a pool of resources uh, that are not only used by your primary characters but also your secondary and your support characters as well. Um, and these are needed to be able to do those actions that you see or that we will see on the other side of his card. And then lastly we've got the era that this card is part of or this unit is part of. And as you can see there that this, as all the other cards are in the core box, is part of the Clone Wars era. Now, this is a primary unit card. Let's just quickly take a look at a, uh, I think it's going to be a support unit, but support and secondary look exactly the same. Got the 501st clone troopers here, and you can see that they're exactly the same era, four stat, unique name, unit type, number of characters. So you can see here that we've got the two little, I want to call them meeples. Uh, they look a little bit like meeple symbols. Um, you'll also notice that um, we're not bringing any force stats with us right now in the game it's only primary characters that are bringing those force power with them uh, who knows in the future other characters may bring it as well but the big thing that changes here is that points cost so you can see here that the 501st clone troopers are going to cost three points so if we were going to put the clone troopers under darth maul he comes with eight we're then spending three it would mean that we would have five uh, four, uh, sorry, five points left over, five squad points to pick our secondary character. So we always need to make sure that we're not going above that number uh, because if not, it's not legal in the game, basically. Um, next thing, let's take a look then at the flip side of this card because there are two sides to these cards. First one is going to tell you everything you need to know sort of prior to the game. The other side is going to show you the things that you need to know whilst you are in the game. Now, we are going to do a deeper dive on these and some of the symbols and everything else like that. So we're just going to do a bit of a high level overview here. Uh, but first of all, we've got stamina. Stamina is basically the number of damage tokens that a character can take before it becomes wounded. And once again, we'll explain in later videos the differences between wounded and injured and damage and all that kind of good stuff. Next up, we've got durability. So really, this is how many injured tokens this character can have and really how many times you can cycle through that 11 stamina uh, before the character is basically taken off the board completely. At the bottom, we've got tags. These are really, really important for unit synergy, especially when you start looking at your primary and then the secondary and the support units that you're going to be taking. You've then got all the list of abilities. Now, again, we'll cover this in a different video, but there's lots of different types of abilities in the game. But I did just want to point out one particular type of ability, which is the identity. Now, identity is going to be unique to the uh, primary unit in the game. This is really where all the flavor of that character is. So if we look at Darth Maul, sorry, Lord Maul, I keep calling him Darth Maul. We look at Lord Maul's for a second there, sustained by rage. While this unit is not wounded, it would spend, and, it, and when it would spend force power to use an ability, it may suffer damage equal to the cost of the ability instead. Uh, and then basically he gets more die for every damage that he's taken. Very, very flavorful for Darth Maul. <clears throat> Basically, just that rage, keeping him going, making sure that he does as much damage as possible. Um, we did mention those force powers. Let's really quickly touch upon what we're spending them on. So we've got force speed there that's going to cost uh, one. And then we've got there's no place to run that's going to cost two. Um, every active and reactive ability has a forced cost. That cost could be zero. So even though, even if you don't see a symbol next to it, there is going to be a cost of zero to it. And that comes into play once you've suffered your first wound and get your first injured token. But again, we'll cover that off in a slightly different video. Next then let's take a look at stance cards uh, and as we sort of alluded to earlier in the earlier in the video uh, there's two different types you're going to have the 
uh, primary stance cards where they're going to be double sided and then you've got the uh, secondary and the support units that right now are single sided basically any time you're going to be rolling dice this is the charts that you're going to be uh, sort of going to and looking through. It gives you all the details from how many uh, ranged attack dice you're rolling, how many uh, melee attack dice you're rolling, your defense dice, uh, where you can do damage. There's a whole video that we'll do around this. So uh, again, we'll, we'll skirt over it now, but just need to make sure that you're bringing these stance cards along with you when you're building your strike team. Order cards next then, uh, and as we, again, as we already said, every unit that you bring to this game will have a corresponding order card. Uh, as we mentioned as well, Kalani's got that little symbol on there showing you uh, that um, how, how that's going to work. Sorry, showing you that she's got that extra ability. Um, now, order cards are really important in the game. They're basically going to be how you choose what character you're going to be activating next. Um, so basically you have a pile of these, uh, you pile them up at the beginning of your turn, you take the top card, and then that's the character that you're going to activate. Now you do have a little bit of control over there, so you can spend one of those force powers and actually put that card in reserve. So let's say that it's round one of the game and you pull an Anakin. You don't really want to pull play Anakin, sort of first of all, you want to wait until some people have moved forward. Um, so you can put Anakin in your reserve pile and then pick another card. And then you have to play that one. Um, you can only ever have one card in reserve at any one time. Uh, and the way that you get them out of reserve is you then decide that you're going to activate that character rather than picking from your pile. Um, there are some characters who uh, can do some funky things. Uh, so we've seen that the B1s have some interaction with the order card pile. Uh, we've seen that Kalani has a cost reduction in there. Obi-Wan's got something in there as well. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how um, manipulation of order cards really plays into the game because, you know, unless you do some manipulation, they are completely random. Uh, so a character that you maybe want to activate first because they're they've taken some damage and you want to try and make sure that you get uh, an activation with them for this cycle um then ugh, yeah you want to you want to try and get their card out as early as possible um but on top of that we do have something called the shatter point card so you're going to be bringing nine uh sorry nine no sorry six order cards um for each of your um three sorry each of your two squads um so you know two primary cards two secondary cards two support cards but you're going to be bringing a seventh order card which is the very special shatter point card um this is basically a wild card this lets you activate any character um, or oh, sorry, any unit, important that we say unit and not character. Uh, this lets you uh, activate any unit um, w irrespective of whether or not it's already been activated or whether it's in the reserve pile or whether it's in your in your hand and is still yet to be pulled out. So um gives you some really, really nice flexibility. You can put the shatter point card in reserve, but you can shuffle it back into your deck. Um, so that's going to be really important. Um, and yeah, it'll be really good to see how that sort of being able to get those double activations with some big characters has a really, really big impact on the game. So just a quick recap then of everything you need to build your first strike team. First of all, you're going to need those cards, those mission cards. So as you remember, we've got the one uh, mission card itself. We've then got the three phase cards of phase one, phase two, phase three. We're going to have our two squads, each one with a primary character each then a secondary and a support unit. And again, remembering that the cost of that support and secondary unit cannot exceed the squad points that they're bringing. So in this example here, um, Rex is four, clone troopers or five or first clone troopers are three. That adds up to seven. Absolutely fine bringing them along with Anakin. Um, it's worth mentioning though, um, you, you can bring whoever you want. You can take... Um, Mandalorian Super Commandos, you can take Kalani with Anakin, whatever it is you want to do, uh, you can mix it up. You just need to make sure that you've got one of each of those three types of unit. They need to bring their stance cards along. As we mentioned, some of them are double-sided, like with primaries. The rest of them are single-sided. We then need to make sure that we bring the corresponding order card for each character. And then last but by no means least, 
bringing that very, very powerful Shatterpoint card. And once you've got all of those together, obviously along with your models as well, uh, hopefully all really nicely painted up, um, then you have your strike team ready to play your very first game of Star Wars Shatterpoint. Well, there we go, guys. There is just a quick video uh, showing you everything you need to be able to put together your first strike team. We're going to be breaking down more of the in-depth rules again in these sort of smaller bite-sized videos. Uh, so we'll be going through, you know, how does line of sight work? What's the timings when we're doing attacking, defending? Everything that you need to know to be able to play Star Wars Shatterpoint. So make sure that if you haven't already, you hit that subscribe button. Also, also check us out over on uh, Discord as well. There'll be links down in the description below. And if you do want to support the channel even further, we do have our Patreon up and running as well. And lastly, we are giving away a Star Wars Shatterpoint corset. Um, so make sure that you've liked this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know down in the comment section below um, which is your favourite primary that you're looking forward to playing with. What's the, the one primary that's going to be the core of your your strike teams. I know mine is Maul because I love me some glass cannons, but let me know who yours is going to be. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, may the force be with you. <laughs>